Of the mountains in the days when guns were small When two families got disputing It was bound to end in shooting So just listen close, I'll tell you what I saw Oh, the Martins and his boys They were reckless mountain boys And they took up family feuding when they did They would shoot each other quicker Than it took your eye to flicker They could knock the squirrel's eye out at night if did All their fighting started out one Sunday morning when old Grandpa Coy was full of Mountain Dew Just as quiet as a church mouse He told in the Martins him how calls the Coy's They needed eggs for breakfast too Oh, the Martins and the Coy's They were reckless mountain boys But old Grandpa Coy had gone where angels live When they found him on the mountain He was bleeding like a mountain Cause it punctured him till he looked like a seal After that they started out to fight in earnest and they scarred the mountains up with shot and shell. There was uncle, brother, cousin. Why, they bumped them off by dozen. Just how many bits of dust is hard to tell. Oh, the Martins and the boys, they were reckless mountain boys. At the art of killing, they become quite dead. They all know they shouldn't do it, but before they hardly knew it, on each side they only had one person left. Now the sole remaining Martin was a maiden. And as pretty as the picture was this gray, while the one surviving boy was the handsome Henry Coy, and the folks all knew they'd soon be face to face. Oh, the Martin and the boys, they were reckless mountain boys. But their shooting and their killing sure played hard. And it didn't bring no joy to know that Grace and Henry Coy both had sworn that they would finish up the job. So they finally met up on a mountain pathway. And young Henry Coy, he aimed his gun at Gray. He was set to pull the trigger when he saw her pretty figure. You could see that love had kicked him in the face. Oh, the Martins and the boys, they were reckless mountain boys. But they say their ghostly cussing gives them chills. Cause the hatchet sure was buried when sweet Grace and Henry married. It broke up the best darn to knees here hills. Let's rehearse it again, Ford. This time, put more feeling into it. How can I put any more feeling into it? With offering those hillbillies over there making all that noise. I'll stop them. With all this confusion, I can't even think. Is that unusual? <laughs> you may think this is where the story ended. But I'm telling you, the ghosts don't cuss no more. Cause since Grace and Henry wedded, they fight worse than all the rest did. And they carry on the feud just like before. Hold it, will you, Gene? Or yelling about the noise. Okay. Mm. All right, quiet now, everybody. Let's the fix it. Ready, Ford? Now, if this horse will stand, I'm ready. All right, roll him. Action. What were you going to tell me, Tom? That I love you. I want to take you back to Painted Valley. And I love you too, Tom. Get ought to be ready for that chase stuff. That's it. Print it. Have you been eating onions? No, darling. Garlic. Well, that's your last scene, Tom. Well, I'm glad of that. And go on that fishing trip I've been planning. Where are you going? Anywhere to get away from these pictures. They're making a nervous wreck out of them. Did you see that? He bit me. Don't worry. We'll give him a dose of castor oil. He'll be all right. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, pal. See if you can't do my son scenes better, Audrey. The last ones were very bad. If I weren't too valuable for the company to take chances on, I'd do them myself. Okay, Mr. Ford, I'll do my best. Are you all ready, Gene? All set.
up. Are you all right? Everything's 100%. That's what he thinks. Where's Tom Ford? He's gone on a vacation. A vacation? Yeah, up in the mountains, fishing. What mountains? Your guess is as good as mine. Holy smoke! I've got to find him. Oh. Get me Ford's house. If I don't find this guy, I'm in a jam. He... Hello, hello. Is this Ford there? Yes. Well, when he comes in, will you tell him that he's not coming in? Do you know where I can reach him? You don't. Oh. Hello, operator. Who's this, Gertie? Lee Wilson. No, I don't want a date. I want to locate Tom Ford. Call Big Bear. Call Arrowhead. Call the detective agency. Call anybody, but find him. And if you don't find him, call me an ambulance. Oh, this is terrible. I was supposed to tell him three days ago he booked to appear at the Texas Centennial. Now what am I going to do? Why, well, ask me. I thought you publicity guys knew everything. Oh. <laughs> the director must have been kidding you. Hey, Tom, Ford, wait a minute. Boy, I never was so glad to see anybody in all my life. What's the matter? Well, we've got you booked for personal appearances at the Texas Centennial in Dallas. Is that me, Bert? Yeah. <laughs> Have a mustache. Bungler, you good for nothing. But I've called every place. I know Mr. Schwartz. I've even got a detective agency looking for him. Do you realize what it means to this studio if Ford doesn't appear at the Centennial? Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Do you realize it is all your fault that he was a notified? Yes, Mr. Schwartz. And do you realize you're fired if you don't find him? Yes, Mr. Schwartz. You don't think I'm kidding, do you? Yes, Mr. Schwartz. I know Mr. Schwartz. No. It's busy. Yes, Mr. Schwartz. I'd like to be a stuntman like you. Oh, you're too fat. I ain't either. I can do anything on the horse that anybody else can. Can you make the Cooper mount? Well, sure. Well, what is that? Well, it's like this. Oh, shucks. I can do that. That's a fit. I didn't jump high enough, did I? Look out, Bob! Why don't you look where you're going? I'm sorry, Bob. You seen Gene? Oh, there you are. How are you, Palsy Wowsy? Boy, am I glad to see you. Why? Well, I'm in trouble, and you're the only guy can help me. You will, won't you? Well, now that all depends. Now, now, what kind of talk is that? What did I say to you that time you wanted to borrow 20 bucks? I said you wanted five bucks to enter. <laughs> I forgot about that, but look, you wouldn't refuse to throw a rope to a drowning man, would you? No. Well, how about throwing me one? I can't get out of here. Oh, never mind him. This is serious. Look, Ford got away on his vacation before I had a chance to tell him that he's booked to appear at the Dallas Centennial. And you've got to go on his place. What? You crazy? I will be if you don't say yet. Nothing to. Oh, please, Gene, please. Oh, I can't go down there and make a big show of myself in front of all those people. And besides, I don't know anything about personal things. You don't have to. I've got detectives looking for Ford. They'll find him before we reach Dallas. This is just a fool the old man. And we gotta start tomorrow. Well, at a boy, I knew you'd do it for a pal. But remember, this is just between the three of us.
fellas all right? Yep, they sure up a bit. Hey, Sam, here's the mm -hmm. I saw the whole thing. It was all your fault. I guess you're right, miss. I'm sorry. It was nothing but carelessness. Now all my steers are loose. Did you say your steers? Yes, my steers. Well, I'm sorry, miss. You already said that. If you were anything but a drugstore cowboy, you'd be out there helping my men round them up. Get off the saddle, Frog. The Western Star? No, ma'am. I mean, yes, sure, sure. That's him in person. Person. Oh. For a minute, we wasn't going to get him. coming to you direct from the magnificent Esplanade of State on the grounds of the Texas Centennial Exposition, where a representative of His Excellency the Governor will welcome Tom Ford, the famous motion picture star. You can hear the band now as they parade down the Esplanade. As Butler told me he didn't know where he was. Looks like Ford's trying to give you the runaround. Nobody gives Tony Rico the runaround when they own 10 grand. Get the car and we're going to Dallas. Thank you. 
Ford. The governor of the state of Texas deeply regrets that he could not be here to personally welcome you to the Texas Centennial Exposition. As his personal representative, it gives me genuine pleasure to cordially greet you and to present you with a commission in that historic police organization, the Texas Rangers. Well, thank you. I, uh, I really feel that I don't deserve it, but I deeply appreciate it. And now, folks, your favorite Western star is a Texas Ranger. Thank you. Mr. Ford, I want you to meet Captain Leonard Pack and his famous horse, Texas. Mighty glad to know you, Captain. Mighty glad to know you, Mr. Ford. You too, Texas. fighting wild animals, but when a bunch of women tear my clothes off, I quit. Oh, you don't want to let a little thing like losing your pants bother you. Well, one night last winter, I had to jump out of a two-story... Hello. Wide awake, detectives? Yeah, this is Wilson. What's that? You found Tom Ford. You hear that? They found him. <laughs> Where is he? At the Della Centennial? You heard him broadcast this afternoon. Oh. Well, so long. Oh, please, Jean, don't leave me now. I'm a sick man. Did you hear about Marion? No. What's the matter with her? Well, just because she got here late, they're not going to use her stairs at the cavalcade show. Why, they can't do that. Well, maybe not, but they're doing it, and she's just a crying her eyes out. All right. Either she gets the job or no more personal appearances. You mean you, you're staying? I'd like to see anyone try to make me leave. Where are those officials? Yippee! He's gonna stay! He's gonna stay! He's gonna stay! He's gonna stay! How do you like personal appearances, champion? Oh, you don't like them. Well, then, do you like me? Does your master like me? Champion is a very smart horse. Say, hey, tell me this. Does she like me? No, what? Well, that's better. Next question is, how much do you like me? Oh, is Mr. Ford going to make a star out of you, too? Listen, will you please run along and leave us alone? No, I won't. Come on and join the fun. Come on. Have you heard the story about the Willie West? When it was the really wild and Willie West. Long before they had to drink his and the cowboy took his chances. We're out in the wild and Willie West. They were men out in the wild and Willie West. They wore their whiskers on their chin and chest. Mother Nature was their tutor, their best friend, the big six shooter, way out in the wild and woolly west. To a bar room in the wild and woolly west came a crooner who has since then gone to rest. He was killed at his piano cause they found he sang the battle. Way out in the wild and woolly west. It was way out in the wild and woolly west. Where a bandit tried to put me in the breast. But the poor deluded drummy did no one just to dummy. You're dumb out in the wild and woolly west. Way out in the wild and woolly west. Where a cowhand shot the buttons off my vest. 
When them cowboys get on bender, they'll shoot off your suspenders. Yeah. Way out in the wild and woolly way. Modern in the wild and woolly west. Every cowboy. I didn't know Ford sang. He doesn't. But or I mean, I didn't either. Does he? We out in the wild and woolly west. Hey, hey, hey! You're supposed to be at the radio station. That's, I forgot all about it. Say, you boys are pretty good. Come along, maybe I can find a spot for you. <laughs> I have a surprise for you folks. I've just discovered that Mr. Ford can sing. So instead of interviewing him, I'm going to ask him to sing a song. made a mess of things. You know Ford can't sing a note. Well, don't blame me, blame Colin. Oh, I could wring his neck. They're clamoring for an encore, Mr. Ford. Will you sing another song? I'd be glad to. It's a sensation, and you got me to thank for it. Thanks. Hello? Mr. Schwartz calling. Yes. This is Wilson. Oh, I just heard Ford sing. Oh, he's wonderful. He's marvelous. From now on, we're making nothing but musical westerns. And, and what? They won't go over. Oh, in a year from now, every studio in the business will be making them. One of them. Hello. Wilson, hello, hello. They operate it. Wilson, what's wrong here? Hello. Hello. I'm mad about you. Don't know why I should be Just my luck I would be So mad about you I'm mad about you 
This is not a daydream. You should know the gay dream I've had about you each night. I just close my eyes and hope it all comes true. What am I gonna do when I'm so mad about you? What a chance I'm taking. It must be love that's making me mad about you. engaged to two people at once, does he? Mademoiselle should not have stayed so long in Europe. Never mind, Aunt Patty. We're flying to Dallas. You put this in the paper about Marion and me being engaged? I should say not. Well, you know I wouldn't get engaged to her without telling her I'm not Tom Ford. I tell you, I don't know anything about it. Well, I think the whole thing's gone far enough. Too far. And it's all your fault. If you hadn't started singing, they'd never have held us over another week. Well, whose idea was it to bring me out here? I know, I know. I never thought there was this much trouble in the whole world. The only thing I can think of is tell the truth. Tell everybody the truth. Oh, no, no, we can't do that. It would ruin Tom Ford. The public would never believe that I planned all this. Oh, why was I ever born? Uh, this is no time for riddles. If anything worse could happen, I'd like to know what it is. Oh, Ford. I want to see you alone a minute. Will you step outside, buddy? But I, 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 I really, I... Oh, that's the stuff. Thanks, pal. What do you want? I want that 10,000, Ford. What 10,000? You forget a gambling debt easy, don't you? Well, I don't. Let's have it. I'm not Tom Ford. I'm his double. My name's Autry. And mine's Robinson Crusoe. But that's my man, Friday. What are you trying to pull? All right, I'll prove it. Come here. Tell this fellow who I am. Who's he? Never mind. Who's he? Well, it's Tom Ford. Are you sure of that? No, uh, sure, I'm sure. All right, if you're sure, let him pay the 10000 10000 For what? Gambling debt Ford owes it. Oh, now, wait a minute, mister. Wait a minute. This isn't Tom Ford. This is Gene Autry. I was just kidding. Well, I'm not. Let's go and write me a check. I haven't got a check. That's what I thought. Here's one made out. Just sign it, Mr. Ford. If this isn't good, I'm coming back. All right, Blackie. How'd you find me? Heard you sing on the radio. You have a pretty good voice, too. When are you going to sing again? I don't want to miss it. What time is it now? After that, we have to tell him you're not Tom Ford. All right. But there's one person I am going to tell. Here. I'm going to find Marion. Hey, this is a secret. Well, she'll keep it. I guess I made a mistake, buddy. 
You can put away that gun. Now you're talking sense. <laughs> you say nobody knows Autry isn't Ford? That's right. What would happen if they found out? Oh, I'm afraid to think about it. You must be pretty smart to pull a fast one like that. Well, I've got brains. Well, we won't argue about that. You are 25 grand here by 4 o'clock or I'll spill the whole works. $25,000? Where am I going to get that much money? From your studio. That's cheap for protecting that good name. But they don't know about it either. You'll never have a better chance to tell them. It's 2 o'clock. I'll see you at four. I want to send a telegram. Hello? Yes, I'm afraid it is. Oh, hello, Mr. Swartz. Did you, did you get my telegram? Yes, I got it but you don't get the $25,000. How are you going to save Ford's reputation when he's sitting right here at my desk? Oh, then you, you know everything. I know you're a faker, a chiseler, a conniver, and a... Uh, a fathead. Two of them. What do you want that money for? Well, somebody found out that Audrey's not Ford, and they want that much to keep quiet. Blackmail, huh? Well, I'll fool them. Ford will fly down immediately and take Audrey's place. Oh, that won't work. I can't say. Oh, this is terrible. All right. I'll send the money right away. Can you get anything off for cash? What kind of a businessman are you? I'll wire the money right away. But I'll take it out of your salary. You'll work for nothing the rest of your life. Yes, Mr. Schwartz. The rest of my life. I should have told you when we first met, but... Uh... Can I see you a minute? What do you want? Well, it's important. I'm busy now. I'll talk to you later. Well, later will be too late. Your fiancé's here. Now, what? Your fiancé, the girl you're going to marry. Why, well, there must be some mistake. Darling, I just got back from Europe yesterday and thought I'd surprise you. Aren't you glad? Well, you certainly did. I mean, I'm awful glad. And now we have a specialty number by Mr. Tom Ford and his famous horse champion, one of the world's finest trained animals. Knock him dead, Ford. Come on, Miss Van Avery, we'll go out front where we can see it better. See you later, darling. Let's get going. I've been rehearsing my part for a week, and boy, I know it perfectly. Tom Ford and his horse champion.
You're hit pretty bad, old fellow. I wish it were me instead of you. <laughs> oh, I know you're suffering. But there's nothing I can do for you except... So long, pal. And Marion. You ought to be ashamed of yourself getting engaged to two girls at the same time. What are you trying to do, start a harem? Where is Marion? She left in her car. How long ago? About a minute. Which gate will she go out? How should I know? Confession to me. You folks all think I'm Tom Ford, but I'm not. I'm Gene Autry, his double. Mr. Ford went away on a vacation and couldn't be found. So to help out a friend, I took his place. Oh. I wish to cast no reflections on the management of the Centennial, or on Mammoth Studios, or upon Mr. Ford, as they are entirely unaware of my impersonation. If anyone is to blame, it is I. And I ask your forgiveness. We don't care who you are. We're for you. You hear that? They like it. I couldn't, they? Plenty good. Well, so long. So long. Yes, sir. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> hey. You don't get that money now. I tore everything. There's nothing to hide. our broadcasts of the cavalcade. We will now switch controls back to this radio station. This is calling all Texas Centennial Rangers. Be on the lookout for three men full of stolen money. I mean three satchels full of stolen men. I mean three men with a satchel full of stolen money. Don't let them get out of the ground. Calling all Centennial Rangers. Calling all Rangers. Be on the lookout for three men with a satchel containing $25,000. They stole it. Don't let them get out of the grounds. They're carrying a brown satchel. Two of them are wearing dark suits and hats. The other has on a gray suit. Come on. Calling all Rangers. Calling all Rangers. Watch all exits. Three men just stole $25,000. They got it in a brown satchel. 
The men are desperate and are armed. Be careful. Watch all exits for three men with a satchel. Here, you broadcast. I've got to find Gene. Calling all rangers. Attention all rangers. Be on the lookout for three men carrying a brown satchel. It contains stolen money. Two of the men are wearing dark suits, the other a gray suit. They are desperate. This must be that place they're having that show. Look, here comes somebody. Have you seen three men with a satchel full of money? No, I haven't. Well, I'd sure like to get my hands on them. Wait a minute. If we can change our clothes, we'll have a chance of getting out of here. But I'm not Tom Ford. That doesn't make any difference. The people want you. Go ahead, Gene. All right. Come on, you fellas. Get on the stage. The finale's going on. Hey, you people over there. Come on. An empire on parade, the imperial flag of Spain. Fleur de Lis of France. The eagle and serpent of Mexico. I'm not doing anything with it. They got it and you got to find them. Uh, there they are, Daddy Kim. Stop, thief! Cover the driver. Come on. Get going.
Money. In the back of the stage. Lock him up, Ranger. He's lonesome for a nice, cool cell.